a special pair of foreigners win Arirang TV's global edition called Codename Pusan after expressing creatively their enthusiasm for all things Korean and more. Welcome to Issues and Insiders. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with the winners of a special global audition that Arirang TV recently hosted in light of Fusan's bid to bring home the 2030 World Expo. For this, I have Adinda Negara from Indonesia with me. Adinda, welcome to the studio. Thank you. I also have Stephanie Tillman from Mexico with us. Stephanie, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Now, Adinda, first of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. Let's start off with a few <laughs> words about your win. Okay, so I wasn't expected before because all of the participants did really great and all of them are talented and we did like very, uh, a lot of missions and they really did great. So uh, I was, yeah, I'm very honored to be a yeah, winner. So I'm, uh, I didn't even expect it before, yeah. And you're, you're sharing this winning post with Stephanie here. Stephanie, how do you feel about your win? Oh, I'm incredibly honored uh, to be part of this experience. I really think that like being ambassador and being able to promote for our World Expo is a life-changing experience. So yeah, be, being part of this vision, uh, it's, it's just a great honor. Right, it must have been very surreal as well. Adinda, I understand the winners were chosen based on their expressions of love for Korea. Yes. How did you seek to get this expression across to the judges? I'm actually a K-pop lover I'm, yeah, me, myself, so I love K-pop culture, uh, Korean culture and K-pop, like K-dramas. And then from that, I just uh, show my best to, uh, to show my talent, like for singing, singing in Korean, and then uh, to change the lyrics to Korean and like put the Busan and World Expo lyrics into the song yeah and uh, yeah just uh, expressing uh, Busan and Expo and all uh, combining my talents yeah into uh, Dinda, I wonder when did your love for Korean culture start? Actually, it, when I was in high school, yeah, so I watched Shiny Ring Ding Dong, yeah, it was all over, yeah, Indonesian, and I was fa fell in love with K-pop at that time, so I'm following K-pop and watching EXO, BTS, and other K-pop, yeah, K-pop groups, so at that time, I'm, uh, I'm trying to learn Korean by myself, because I, I have a dream to watching K-dramas without any subtitles, yeah, at that time. I see, that is amazing, that Thank really you. is. Stephanie, the yeah. contest itself, it started back in April, I understand. That being mm -hmm. said, how many challenges were there in total? And among these challenges, Stephanie, what would you say was the most difficult? Yeah, um, there were 10 individual challenges and one team mission. Um, and I will say from the, 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 all the ones that I had the most challenging was, was one that we swap categories. So firstly, we choose what we wanted to do, but then the rules change and we had to switch and I got singing. Um, I'm not a singer, so I really thought it was going to be over for me after that. But I was determined just to keep pushing and well, now I'm here, so I ended up well. <laughs> I, know, I can tell. What did you sing? Do you remember? Yeah, Queen Card by G Idol. I, I had to change the lyrics as well. So uh, How long did you get to practice it? <sighs> A week, I think it was. Uh, it was a week. Yeah. Was it just the singing out. part, or did, were you required to dance? No, as well? it was just the singing. So I, I did a little bit of this, but that's that's about it. <laughs> I see. Adinda, what about you? What would you say was the most challenging part of these uh, tasks that you were given? It's actually same with Stephanie <laughs> because at the first time they uh, they ask us to like choose our category. And what did you choose initially? Korean. I want to show my Korean like um, yeah talent but after the MC said that we have to switch the category so I was wondering what is category that I will be and it's with dancing yeah and I've never danced in my life like this is the first time I'm dancing in my life so yeah I'm just uh, I have a, an idea to um, like it, because it have to be uh, have a relation with boogie yeah Busan Kaimegi and at that time so I'm using like Busan Kalmegi songs and I was dancing like K-pop, a very legend uh, dance, like nobody but you, like uh, very K-pop dances. Again, how much practice time did you get? 
I think it's three days. Just three yeah, days. Three I days. see, that's amazing. <laughs> Stephanie, I've been told yes. that participating in this televised audition for you especially was a learning experience in many different aspects. Could you tell us a bit about that? Of course. Yeah, this uh, this experience was definitely learning-wise um, because I initially started with cooking. So cooking was the only skill I could have, let's say. And then challenges like this one require me to sing, require me to dance, require me to actually do more things so I had to quickly adapt in order to keep moving forward so I definitely learned also about video editing um, I really think that that really helped me uh, throughout the process and of course yeah I realized that getting out of the comfort zone teach you a lot of uh, skills uh, that you have within yourself you just have to uh, try a little harder and um, push forward <laughs> and talking about cooking uh, Stephanie what's your speciality <gasps> oh. The the way you cook pop, uh, I think it was close uh, to the to the real original one. <laughs> right, you think? What about the response from those around you? Did they agree? They said yeah. it was good? Yeah, they, they were good, yeah, yeah. When did your, I should have asked you this earlier, but Stephanie, when did your interest in Korean culture start? Oof, that was, uh, well, my, my best friend in, back in Mexico, she always has a love with, for Korean uh, culture and K-pop and K-dramas and everything around it. So I've known about Korea for quite a long time, since childhood, but like my personal interest started like 10 years ago uh, when I started taking care of my skin. So <laughs> hey, I was, yes, K-beauty is so high end and um, yeah, innovation. So I really started doing it, yeah, getting into that and that, that drove me to K-dramas to see the lifestyle, uh, the ways of working and of living and then K-pop because it's just so, yeah, attractive uh, for everybody. So yeah, and then I ended up with cooking. I was like, okay, now that's the only thing I'm missing. So I'm gonna start trying some dishes and try to replicate them. Um, a lot of research, yeah, as well to know the history of the dishes and right, of course, ingredients. Of course. <laughs> right, I'd have to agree there. Adinda, what has it been like in terms of learning with regard to taking part in this particular audition? Actually, I learned a lot in so many aspects uh, from yeah from this because I also learned a uh, dance, uh, that, that <laughs> dance. Yeah, if I've never um, accepted that mission, I would never know that I maybe can yeah have a kind of talent of dancing. Did you dancing. have like a mentor or somebody to help? you with the dance moves no I'm just like looking for the tutorial yeah on YouTube yeah on other social media and then like the, uh, the other aspect that I learned is I didn't even know uh, the mascot of Busan before yeah and I learned a lot of Busan related things from uh, yeah through this and I know Busan Kalmegi from this yeah from particular this program mission. yeah from this practical mission as well and also uh, I know a lot of tourist attraction more about yeah, in that is um, yeah in Busan, and I learned more about the Busan culture, especially like Satori. Yeah, it's like Busan accent. Yeah, I also learned that because I'm preparing for the Korean mission at the time, Korean category. But I didn't get Korean category. I got dance, but I already learned the Satori. Yeah. The missions sound really hard. Were there any particular missions that you found to be relatively easier than the others? Um, I think it was the first mission. So the first mission is like like uh, you can express yourself uh, related to a K-pop idol in Busan. Yeah, that uh, from Busan. Do you remember what you said for that mission? I was singing uh, "Next Level" from Espa because yeah, Winter is from Busan, and yeah, I changed the lyrics yeah slightly to yeah become it more related to Busan. <laughs> right, I see. <laughs> and speaking about Busan, Stephanie, what were your initial thoughts about the southern port city of Busan when you went when you visited it? Yeah, um, the first time I went there, I saw that it was quite a a contrast of uh, nature with urban life and uh, so that really caught my attention because you have like all you need in an urban life and metropolitan place but then it's very harmonious with the nature and you also have a lot of yeah places to go eat as well so it basically has uh, everything <laughs> in one place and, and staying with Pusana Dinda what were your impressions of the city when you saw it I, I'm really impressed with the beach 
Uh, yeah, because like Hyundai and especially Kuang Ali at the night, so the, the view is was like amazing. And then they have like basking there. Mm. Yeah, they have like music, live music and live uh, fireworks. It was really beautiful. Yeah. I have to agree with you. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie, here's a fun yeah. task for you. Could <laughs> you make me a sentence using mm. 10 particular words that seeks perhaps a final pitch for Pusan's bid to host the 2030 World Expo. Okay, um, I could say, well, I'm going to count them. <laughs> Busan, where um, innovation, tradition and culture uh, harmonize together, welcomes the world. Oh, beautifully done. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Adinda, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to enumerate perhaps Busan's appealing traits. Okay. Mm, beach, mountains, and buildings, metropolitan, mm -hmm. and weather, Kalmegi, and then the uh, sands and sky capsule, and the boats, and the last thing is uh, Satori. It's accent. <laughs> the dialect, of yeah, course. Yeah, the dialect. Adinda, if you had a friend from Indonesia visiting Busan for the first time, mm -hmm. apart from Kuang Ali Beach, where else would you take your friend? Where else would you go and what would you do in Busan? Okay, maybe to Taejongde. Yeah, because it was a tem it is a temple and I went to observatory one, yeah, and we can see clearly the beach from yeah, from upstairs and then we can see uh, the rocks there and the like the, the the sea is like very clear and the weather is very great so especially the temple itself it was very amazing so i will maybe i will take uh, my friend to there and then uh, i found the food there is also yeah, very great so I will recommend it definitely to her. Right. To and staying with the same question, Stephanie, if you had a friend visiting you from Mexico, yeah. where would you take your friend if you were visiting Pusan? Everywhere. What would you do? <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I guess it will depend what kind of vibe she wants to have. Uh, is it like more nature? We can go to the coastal trails. Uh, if it's more like a beach uh, environment, then of course all the beaches that are there. Uh, but also if it's more of a, like a lifestyle uh, of shopping perhaps, then uh, a lot of malls in Hyundai area. Um, so yeah, or if, if you want a spiritual connection, all the temples, like I had the opportunity to go to Yungungsa uh, and pff, the view from there is just breathtaking. It's just like a great blend. Right. So it's very that will serene. be like the yeah, very serene. And then the view with the clear skies, the sun and the blue water. It's, it's just really amazing. Right, it really is. Uh, finally, Adinda, what are your plans with regard to perhaps promoting Pusan's bid to host the 2030 World Expo? Okay, so I'm uh, actually a YouTuber myself and I'm content creator, so I'm absolutely really sharing all that of the places that I've visited before yeah, uh, in Busan and then I will like uh, making a vlog to end my YouTube channel and then like uh, promoting all of aspects in Busan, especially like for tourist spots and foods and then like uh, culture as well. So I will like uh, promote all of uh, beautiful aspects that I found in Busan from this trip. And what has been the response to your uploads? Actually, I've uploaded a lot of Insta Instagram stories yeah, before and they said, please upload more. I want to like watch Busan from your Instagram. And they said like, wow, Busan is very beautiful mm -hmm. because most of them only know like Seoul for Korea. But uh, at this time, oh, there is also like Busan in Korea. Yeah, so like I want to make like uh, Busan to be iconic yeah, as Seoul in Korea. Right. And Stephanie, do tell us a bit about your future plans yes. back in Mexico with regard to promoting Busan? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I didn't thought I was going to get this far, so I haven't thought that far yet. <laughs> but I definitely want to keep promoting uh, Busan via online uh, for people globally to know what are the good, the, the gems, the hidden gems as well uh, to Busan. And I'm looking forward to team up with the production, yeah, to keep just working together on how we can give more of a, um, yeah, a, a stand uh, in the world for this. 
Right, as Busan hopes to bring home the 2030 exactly. World Expo. All right, Stephanie, thank you so much for your thank time you. and your thoughts today. And Adina, thank you so much. And of course, congratulations to both of you. Thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs> thank you. Right, well, that ends this edition of Issues and Insiders. Be sure to join us same time tomorrow as well. Thank you for now.